Uh, so we're at the Bear Lake parking lot, Rocky Mountain National Park. Super crowded on Monday morning. It gets full by 8 a.m. on a Monday, so recommend getting here early. We got lucky, we got a parking spot really close to the trailhead here. We're gonna do a big loop out in Rocky Mountain National Park, link up some other trails, go way beyond Bear Lake, uh, which most people, it's more crowded around the lower areas. Uh, get up in the high country a bit. Got my Nathan Vapor Crawler vest, uh, some hydration, spring energy, electro ride, spring energy gels, uh, some other snacks in there, jacket, uh, of course the camera gear, and a Koros uh, with a map function on it. I got the GPX file from Strava, made a route, and then uploaded it on there, so we'll be running the maps on there. We also have a paper map as, as well. All right, Bear Lake. Right. Oh, it's about an 11 mile loop, but it'd probably be longer way I'm out there on Strava. High altitude as well. So we're starting off actually on the trail that climbs up Flat Top Mountain. It's a great climb. Again, high altitude push. Pretty nice trail, fairly popular with hikers to get up flat top, but then we're gonna split off of it. So uh, take a different route. Once so we got the navigation map function going on the Koros, plugged in the route, easy sync with the Koros app on my phone. GPX file goes right into the Koros vertex. You can see the map, you could zoom in on it with the dial. It's pretty sweet. Just sandy, climbing well at altitude already. Started over 9,000 feet, so it's like 2,600 meters of altitude. We've already climbed quite a bit out of the parking lot there, and the trail gets way less crowded. Heading up towards Odessa Lake, and uh, yeah, it's a nice day, beautiful day in Rocky Mountain National Park. Blue sky, pretty hot and sunny, love it. Already getting a view. The Hoka One One Torrance on. Nice trail shoe. Not a good sign. We're only like a mile and a half in and we're hitting a lot of snow. We're not even up that high, so this is surprisingly not a good thing here. If the trail is covered in snow, it's gonna be not what we wanted. Kind of like runnable trails. I like the snow, don't get me wrong, but we had a lot of snow this winter. The snow melts been really slow, that's why they canceled Hard Rock and the San Juans. Indian Peaks, Rocky Mountain here. Snow always melts really late in the year. Uh, I guess the sun didn't hit here very much. Use my map to see where the trail is. <laughs> So context of training, I know a lot of you are concerned I didn't take a rest week, didn't reset. Uh, I mean, I have been resetting, I had fun. I took a pretty down week after Mount Blanc. Uh, you know, over racing is definitely a problem. I don't think it's over training. It's more like under training for the specific demands of these different events, but over racing and not giving myself enough time. Obviously three weeks between comrades and Mount Blanc was really stupid. Uh, but I've, you know, I think I've been having some form issues even before Rotterdam, even since 2015. And I'm just trying to straighten out with some new exercises that I'll be glad to show you guys. And uh, ooh, look at this view. We got some waterfalls up on the hill there. It's beautiful up here. Uh, as well as checking my vitamin levels, especially like B12 status. I'm trying to clean up my diet a little bit more. I think, you know, compared to most Americans, I think I eat generally pretty healthy. And I think- record, I've been telling you all this stuff. Months. You've been years. preaching. I don't practice. We don't. I don't listen to you enough.
So yeah, I knew I could cut out a little desserts, cut out a little beer, those extra calories, uh, eat more salads, I think. Probably need that. My folate's pretty high though, so I wasn't too worried about folate, but it's getting in a ton of antioxidants. Uh, trying to eat clean, but sleep well, recover like that, but also doing these extra exercises with my new hex bar weight, hex bar deadlifts, stretching out the hip flexors more, doing more high intensity stuff, actually. I think I shied away from that, especially with the hill reps. So short high intensity hill reps. Retrain the form and I get that lactate threshold back up. So I think, like I said, I wasn't overtrained. I've really only averaged like 60 miles a week the past month, past four weeks, which is, uh, you know, that's low mileage for me, actually. I've ran that much in high school. So it wasn't running more than 60 miles a week. Last week, almost 80 miles, but I'll probably keep it under 100 just to be on the safer side because I'm doing shorter races and uh, I want to focus on that intensity. So oh, we got a little snowfield crossing here. That's going to be cool. It's uh, not a good... Would not be good to slip, actually. You would be, uh, you might slide into some rocks if you. <laughs> it's not that bad. No. You you definitely would have trouble stopping yourself, though. No, you slide all over. It would not be a pleasant ending. Probably cut your leg open or something. Really don't want to have to get stitches today. Not today. That trail's for the privy. It's a funny word. Sponsor plugs, product plugs, enter code ROCASH20 for a discount at ROCA for the Halsey model. These are sunglass product sponsor plug, hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored. Uh, what else can I plug? Enter code SAGE at myspringenergy.com. Try out the Canterbury. All right, enough of that. Let's get going. All right, so now we're climbing out in the hot sun. <laughs> nice climb. Anyway, back to the over racing, over training thing. I did pull out of the Dolomites run in the Dolomites this past, or this upcoming week. Really wanted to do it, but I had to pull out just so I could give myself some more rest after Mount Blanc and try to reset the system and get some consistent training in, right? Not over racing. Falling into that trap of doing a race every three weeks. Definitely a bad idea, so that's, Really wanted to be there, really bad I'm missing out. Looks like a fun time, beautiful course in Italy. Really wanted to travel there and race, but trying to play it smart. Focus on my health and training back home here in Colorado. Getting some altitude stuff for pikes. Focus on the stairs and all on pikes now instead. As well as do my extra exercises. Travel less, fly less, pollute less as well. Ooh, Sandy's crushing the slime. So as I was saying, less racing, more focus on consistent training, and feeling good. I'm feeling good again. Back home in Colorado, getting in some high altitude stuff. Here in Rocky Mountain, going up Elbert the other day, getting into the high country, summer adventures eating healthier, taking a lot of B12, things like that. So let's finish up this loop. All right, after that last climb, it's getting pretty hot out here today, uh, but finishing up a loop, probably be over 11 miles, maybe 12 miles or almost 20K, uh, with several thousand feet of climbing, high altitude, good variety of trail. This loop in Rocky Mountain National Park, you can find me on Strava, Instagram, Twitter, at CHCanada. All right, so back where we started, Bear Lake. Going back to the car, a little over 12 miles. All right, just finished up the run. Ended up being about 12 miles, 20K. 
uh, 3,000 feet of climbing, almost 1,000 meters. But high altitude and great uh, single track, great trails, Rocky Mountain National Park. It does get very crowded around the Bear Lake area, but once you get up high uh, on those miles, it's a lot more isolated. And of course, beautiful scenery right in our backyard out of Estes Park, Colorado. Uh, again, thanks to all the Patreon supporters for really making this possible. Thanks for subscribing on here. It really helps me out a lot. Thumbs up if you like these types of videos. Stay tuned for more uh, training and running form tutorials as well as training vlogs, stuff like that. Check out Coach Andy's channel, Running Wild to Believe. Uh, be sure to subscribe on there too. Thank you again. Hope your running is going well. Stay tuned for more.